Hello and welcome to the Hume of the Cinema podcast. My name is Harshit and this is a show where I'm going to be talking to film celebrities about their favorite films, about the impact of cinema and about a lot of other things that you would love to hear them talk about. In the first episode, I'm talking to Mr. Kabir Khan, the director of films like Ek Tha Tiger, New York and Bajrangi Bhaijan and about his new Amazon original show, The Forgotten Army. I'm talking to him about his favorite film, about The Forgotten Army and the challenges that he faced while making it. Please watch the video and let me know what you think about it and I'm open to more suggestions about the kind of questions that I can ask my guests in the future so please uh, feel free to let me know and please don't forget to like, share and subscribe the video and enjoy the video. Sir, uh, welcome to the show. Thank and you. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, I'm so happy that um, my first episode and the, the first uh, time I'm doing the show is with you. Great. It's such a pleasure. Um, sir, so my first question to you is, um, sir, like, what's your favorite film? What's your favorite film of all time? You know, honestly, for a filmmaker to say that is going to be really difficult because I've also often thought about this and said, which is the film that would be my favorite film? I mean, I've been seeing so many films. I've been influenced by so many uh, different kinds of uh, films and cinema and, and directors. But, you know, when I look back, I realize it's not necessarily always about uh, how good that film was. It's about at that point in time in your life, the effect it had on me. Um, so... When I look back like that, I would say uh, Richard Attenborough's Gandhi uh, because I was uh, very young when I uh, saw that film and uh, in a certain sense, I'll tell you why that the whole uh, film had a large influence on me. I used to live in Delhi, in central Delhi. My father was uh, uh, nominated to parliament, so we used to live in an area around India Gate and I was cycling around one day and I saw these truckloads and busloads of people coming. Uh, to the India Gate lawns and I was like what is happening and I went cycling up to where the crowds are and I was stopped at one point and I said what's happening and they said you know uh, Gandhi film ki shooting was uh, so I said oh wow I said what is happening and then yeah. I was told that, that the, it's a funeral scene where people are you know walking and in those days there was no VFX right they actually had those hundreds or thousands sure, of people yeah. walking down the Rathpur so I said I also want to be part of it but I was stopped because they said nahi aapke kapde galat hai. I think I was wearing orange t-shirt and yeah. jeans something they said, Aap, aku, agar you want to be a part of this, wear white clothes and come. I cycled back, uh, picked up my cousin also, and we both wore like kurta pajama and came cycling back to uh, India Gate, uh, locked our cycle left and ran into the crowd. So in that opening shot of Gandhi, somewhere in those hundreds or thousand oh. people is one little <laughs> me there also. After that, when the film came, of course, I recall this, right? I remember that I'd been a uh, part of the shooting. And that film, I saw, of course, it is a masterpiece. Therefore, it went on to, you know, win all the Oscars yeah, that it yeah. did. Uh, but that film had a huge impact on me because, and that's why I even till date, I gravitate towards film with a real backdrop, with a political backdrop, uh, true stories. And every single department of that film uh, is something that had a huge impact on me. I remember that's the first, like my mom, because she knew that I loved this film so much, she went and got the LP, which had the soundtrack of, of the film. And I used to hear it on the record and I, I, I understood for the first time, okay, what does background music do to a film? I started seeing those scenes and saying, when we got the, v, uh, you know, the VHS tape, I started seeing those scenes again. So that film has had a huge impact on me and I would say even now, sometimes knowingly and unknowingly, almost every film of mine has that one shot which is a direct influence of wow. Gandhi. Wow, that's, that's great to know, yeah. sir, because... It's interesting that you mentioned that because my next question was going to be about that <clears throat> because most of the films have been about have been espionage dramas have been um, war dramas war or uh, politics some have conflict been, as a some background. conflict some conflict they have been about national identity so um, do you think that your experience of being on the set of Gandhi as a child um, like w was that a major reason for why you probably gravitated towards that or were there other factors involved as well? I think that, of course, was a, was a, was a big influence, and I started looking at you know um, true stories and stories based with a, a very larger than life political backdrop in a certain way. But apart from that, were the other reasons also. I grew up in a very political uh, uh, household in the sense my father was uh, the founding professor of uh, one of the founding professors, JNU. He was yeah. a professor of political science. Um, he was a uh, 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 you know so uh, the JNU professors who would come home and talk. They would talk about you know issues around the world in India. There would be members of parliament who would be coming home and we would be chatting. So everything was political. Everything was yeah. about things happening around us. Politics was dining room conversation for us. So I think that in me, uh, you know, the whole love for, for politics came from there. Uh, and therefore, then when I grew up, I started, I think, watching films 
um, which had these kind of backdrops yeah. and I often say that filmmakers ultimately end up making films that he or she likes to watch uh, and uh, and that's the reason why I always get gravitated towards or I get pulled towards uh, you know films which have these kind of backdrops even in mainstream Indian cinema uh, I would say that you know Mani Zatam was one of my favorite filmmakers right. because he would yeah. always have this very larger than life political backdrop um, and uh, in my formative years as a documentary filmmaker when I was traveling the world I spent a lot of time in conflict zones whether it was in Afghanistan or whether it was Bosnia or whether it was in back home here in Kashmir uh, I think all that sort of in a, in a sense pushed me towards always looking at ideas and stories based in a conflict zone so sir, um, you obviously worked on the docu series The Forgotten Army back in the 90s, and um, now uh, you you worked on this Amazon original series. Um, do you think that from from then to now, um, in a way, all your career, all your filmography has been leading up to this? Was this something that you were working towards, making making a fictional show based on the, your experience of working on that docu series? Uh, that documentary, you are right, had a huge impact on me. Uh, I, I have often said that actually the Forgotten Army, the documentary was a life altering experience for me because, you know, at a very young age to get that kind of a, a experience of taking two survivors, two veterans of this army, yeah. you know, two, two senior officers, Colonel Rudrak Singh Hillen, Captain Lakshmi Sehgal, the commander of the 1st Women's Regiment, Rani Gatsi Regiment, back and then actually having people who made history tell me about, you know, how it happened standing in those exact places was an amazing influence for me. Uh, and therefore, even though I went on to make the documentary and it, you know, got me a lot of attention and acclaim, the story never left me. I always yeah. wanted to tell that story at a, as a, at a larger level. And therefore, this whole journey of 20 years in trying to get it onto screen and finally, you know, it's come out as a uh, Amazon original series uh, uh, at the scale uh, at which I wanted to make this film. Yeah. Did you ever consider making it into a film? Absolutely. I wrote it as a film script. So the first oh, thing did. that I did was the first film script that I ever wrote was a film script called The Forgotten Army. Uh, at that time, there was no other option, right? There were only films that you could do yeah. or you could do television, but a story like this at that point in time would never go on television. So I I first wrote it as a, as a script, film screenplay, but it's only later when I started got in conversation with Amazon that I sort of rewrite it into a, um, a five-part five mini-series. Series, yeah. Yeah. Um, sir, I watched the show. I loved it. Um, Thank you. I, because uh, I loved it so much because, uh, so the only the only thing that I've seen besides The Forgotten Army that is based on the, the Indian National Army is uh, Rag Desh, which was yes. Himachal Pradesh's film, yes. um, which also I really liked, but I was extremely disappointed by the lack of attention that it got. Yes. Um, and uh, <clears throat> so uh, what I really liked about the show was, uh, what, what I actually found interesting was that you chose to tell a fictional story in the backdrop of the events that happened. Correct. Was there a particular reason for that? Uh, so I, for more dramatic storytelling, I think what I realized is that in those 20 years, when the initial draft, I think I was more sort of almost a slave to the history, right? Exactly the way it happened. Then I realized, okay, anyway, this is a history that people don't know. As long as I'm true to the events and I'm true to the, you know, uh, timeline of how it unfolded, yeah. let me create characters which are not totally fictional, but they are actually a combination of several characters. So Maya is actually a combination of two, three uh, soldiers of the Rani Jhansi yeah. Regiment who I had the privilege of meeting. Uh, you know, whether it's Captain Lakshmi Segal or Janki Thevar, who was the second in command. So I picked up elements from her, their stories, like the story of, you know, uh, taking out the earrings and giving it to Netaji, what happened to Janki Thevar. Yeah. The love story is what Captain Lakshmi Segal had with Prem Kumar Segal. Uh, similarly, in the in, in the case of uh, Sodi, uh, he is a combination of Gurbak Singh Dhillan, Prem Kumar Segal, Shanavas Khan. Uh, so I, I decided, okay, let me take elements of their uh, um, stories and put it into one character so that the, the storytelling becomes more engaging you you more engage with one one character and following him or her uh, through the narrative right right so um so my next question to you is a little more generic uh, what i want to ask you is what according to you is the purpose of cinema do you think oh, wow. yeah do, do you think that uh, because that is a conversation but this is a condition that has been happening ever since cinema has come into being, you know. And this is a question that nobody has the answer to, but people have their own interpretations of it. I mean, that, that's absolutely true. There, there, there can, can never be one answer to that. Yeah. Because uh, there's so many uh, reasons why people come and watch uh, cinema, right? I mean, of course, uh, if you were taking it in the context of our country, then uh, this one single uh, largest reason would be entertainment. Yeah. Uh, people who come to, uh, to watch cinema to get entertained. I think worldwide also that would be the single uh, one reason. But the point is, along with that entertainment comes a lot of other things. You know, along with the entertainment ca comes, um, uh, you know, just 
the fact that you can uh, be informed about certain issues you can be so informed about certain subjects you can explore certain you know stories and characters uh, so it's very it's very difficult for anybody to answer and say you know what is that one thing that cinema is meant for yeah, i yeah. think it's just layers and layers and layers and the most amazing thing about cinema is that every individual who's sitting in that theater will walk away with his or own, her own uh, uh, yeah, part of cinema that they will enjoy so uh, i think that's the magic of cinema uh, once it's out there everybody derives whatever they can from it whatever pleasure they get from yeah. the, from from cinema but but um, you know again like this is a conversation that's uh, especially happening in our country right now where uh, we're talking about risk, risk, the responsibility attached with cinema yeah. and not just in, in our country it's happening worldwide yeah. you know with films like joker also coming there was yeah. a lot of conversation around the responsibility of that film uh, in terms of whether or not it could have potential inside violence inside violence you know? yes um so do, do you think that it's okay to attach that kind of responsibility uh, to cinema or to uh, with filmmakers up to a point it shouldn't become uh, you know we shouldn't start taking moral positions on you know what filmmakers should do or filmmakers not to because what might be correct for me might not be correct for you and vice versa so up to a point yes i do believe that uh, filmmakers uh, need to be responsible for for what they're doing especially in our country i think you know mainstream cinema is such a powerful medium it has such a large influence on people that definitely you need to be responsible for what you're putting it out there but if you start stressing too much on that then it's a certain sense that who's going to decide what yeah. you know then then it's censorship Yeah. Uh, you know yeah, okay. who is going to decide that what you're showing is correct or not. So, so it has to be left to uh, a filmmaker's sensibilities. Ultimately, you know what is the best part about cinema is that watching it is a voluntary act. Mm. And if you don't like what's being shown, you will reject it. And if you like what's being shown, you'll go for it, right? So I think that has to be. It's a balance that the filmmakers and the uh, uh, you know the viewers uh, will always find. It's 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 a it's a very fine balance about what one is putting out and what people are enjoying. And it has to be left to individuals and societies to figure out on themselves. I don't I don't think there can be any structures and commands and institutions that are going to enforce and you know try and control what's going to happen. That's 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 something that I definitely would not like uh, it to happen because it's ultimately making cinema, watching cinema, it's all about human behavior. Yeah. It all has to find a balance within a society. Yeah. Do, do you feel that that's something that you struggle with now? Um, that all, all now that all the all these conversations are happening as a writer, especially. No, I, 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 these are things. See, you need to be aware of these things, but you should not let them play on your mind. Especially when you're sitting down and writing, you can't be having. The, you're already struggling. You're trying to create a good enough story to tell, right? You're always saying, okay, how do I tell this story engagingly to an audience uh, in the best way form? On top of that, you start getting these kind of, you know, uh, things to be sitting heavy on your uh, mind. I don't think that'd be a good process. Uh, yeah. So you need to be aware, but you at some point you have to just shut off from all that. Yeah, you know, one of the scenes that I really loved from the show was. Uh, Uh, it came towards the end when uh, uh, the character played by M K Rana, he uh, he he talks to his nephew, yeah. uh, his his grand nephew, and he and he tells him that the purpose of what the purpose of freedom is. Talks about the purpose of freedom. Um, could you talk a little bit about? How yeah, that I mean that's a line which a lot of people have found resonance with, and they've said that it in the context of today also it's it's very important. Yeah. Where uh, Amar asks him, "Ski, you know, you guys gave up everything, you sacrificed everything. What what was it all for? What was the point of doing this?" Yeah. And he turns around very sharply and says, uh, "That's a question you guys will have to answer because maybe our battle was easier. Our battle was to get uh, freedom, uh, but." fighting and maintaining freedom is a even tougher battle and that's yeah. a battle you guys have to fight yeah. and that's so true uh, yeah. you know we we tend to take these things so for granted especially you know us and generations which are you know younger than me we tend to take so many things for granted in our country uh, and sometimes when those uh, very principles and very those values come under attack uh, we need to be able to stand up for them and protect them yeah um how, how did the idea of um In incorporating the Burmese protests come into that's the way it happened to me. So see everything that is in the what series is the way it happened to me. I have stepped into uh, Burma when the the uh, the protests were happening. Uh, now I I could have spent uh, time trying to explain what's happening, but you know I think with again with the original series, you know international series, I said these are things that I think I can take for granted with my audience. You know that I'm I'm setting it up in 1996. I'm stepping into Burma. Uh, there were student protests going on at that point in time. I don't think I need to. label myself about what is happening that if people get confused they can always you know you know google mm -hmm. and find out what's happening but yeah. i think they're giving you enough information from the word go we telling you there are student protests happening yeah, in in be. in pro democracy yeah. uh, student protests happening in in burma so i think at some level we also have to 
you know respect and trust uh, the audience that they have enough information they have enough understanding to follow uh, what is being said in the in the series or the film yeah uh, were there any particular shows that you that you probably saw or took reference from for while making the show uh, watched, like a lot shows. of people talk about band of brothers which i also personally like a lot so see i think what happens is that <coughs> whenever you're making a film on any subject you do tend to see related uh, series like if i'm making 83 i've tried to see you know all the sports films yeah. uh when i was writing uh, uh 20 years ago actually um for gotnami i watched a lot of war films um so you do a series i did not yes band of brothers i've seen years ago but i think those things i think you watch them and they sort of get internalized ultimately then your own story dictates what you have to do in these things because the battles that were fought in burma by the azad in forge our in character going to be very different from you know some of the other things that happened there's a certain different history attached to it another sort of story attached to it but yes uh, having said that i think whichever subject you're working on you try and see as much as you can on those subjects yeah true um so sir i'll i'll just end uh, with my last question because you uh, mentioned 83 as well um so again 83 again a uh, historical biographical drama um what are the kind of challenges that uh, you had to face while making a film like that or writing a script like that you know when Uh, there's so much that people already know about it. They've seen yeah. them grown yeah. up with it. Yeah, I think that's a classic uh, problem of making a sports film that's based on a true story. Yeah, that question of "Are end me jitenge or not jitenge" is not yeah. something that you can play. Yeah, yeah. We are making the that's film because we uh, jite the. Um, but uh, having said that, in '83, the magic is not the fact that they were the one or not. It's how they won it. the journey is what is interesting you know how did this bunch of uh, classic underdogs uh, uh, the most uncelebrated team landing up in london almost every newspaper writing them off and saying that this team should not even be invited to the world cup how did this bunch of boys literally hold each other support each other and yeah. go on to win the world cup that's what 83 uh, is all about uh, and you write i mean it's uh, you know 83 is an iconic moment in 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 indian history everybody who's above the age of 40 45 you know know so much about it so yes that challenge to what is that something new that i'm going to bring to them but the most pleasant surprise that i got when i sat with all the original players and i started talking to them is there's so much that has still not come out i was shocked there's a gold mine of information yeah. that has not been told and i said oh my god i feel so yeah. enriched as a filmmaker that i have all this material yeah. and i'm going to bring out uh, to the world oh, wow. sir uh, thank you so much for talking with us Thanks a lot. it's been a It's pleasure lovely. and um, yeah um and thank you so much for joining us guys uh, this was kabir khan talking about the forgotten army and um, yeah thank you so much thanks a lot thank you sir. thank you